Welcome back to the channel on today's crazy hair day. Crazy quiff doing today. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to learn two slip jigs. One, a very famous tune called The Rocky Road to Dublin, which is kind of a hop jig, although it's in 9-8, which is technically a slip jig. And before it, we're going to learn a tune called Barney Brannigan's. It's a really simple little tune, but provides loads of opportunities, as always, for adding in lots of fun stuff. These are two pretty nice simple tunes and they're an easy win if you're looking to get two tunes under your belt that you can play at a session. I'm going to cover the basic melody of each tune slowly, adding in simple ornamentation. We're going to look at chords, we're going to look at double stops, slides, hammer-ons, some left hand ornamentation where we're going to do the triplets as pull off hammer-on triplets. We're going to increase the pace and eventually we'll put the two tunes together and I'm going to record them with a bower on backing track at 80 BPM, 100 and 120 BPM. Because the two tunes, although both are written in 9-8, Barney Brannigan's has a lot more notes in it, and so that feels a little pacey at 120, but the Rocky Road to Dublin really likes to be played faster. It has more space in the tune. This is the simple version of Barney Brannigan's slip jig. Barney Brannigan's jig is very old. It might be known as Blewett's jig. It was compiled in Scotland in Cameron's selection of violin music in 1859, and it was called Blewett's jig. 
This time we're going to play Barney Brannigan's a little bit more pace again and in the third part you'll notice a slight variation to the melody adding in some faster notes. These tunes are great opportunities to learn to leave your fingers on the frets for as long as possible to create little moments of resonance. So just watch out for that on my left hand. at home playing it very lightly with a very gentle touch on the right hand you can get some interesting left hand hammer on pull off finger triplets mightn't work as well if you're playing in a pub for instance and this comes up in a session because a lot of these little subtleties are lost but it's nice to play around with them at home when you can play nice and lightly and quietly Essentially what we're doing, we're creating triplets and some maybe even like a fiddle roll, but we're doing it all with our left hand. So the right hand is just picking as it normally would without the ornaments. So we're not doing the, which we can do and we will, but these are just doing it with the left hand. That one is a hammer on pull off. just a hammer on. Sometimes these depend on the level of resonance that's in your actual banjo. So some banjos resonate more than others. This neck full is extremely resonant. The clarion oyster that I play is too, but I do understand that some banjos mightn't have that the same amount. And certainly when you do have that resonance, it's easier to make those hammer on and pull off notes. As promised, here's a version. We're going to do the right hand triplets. Keeping it simple because it's a simple piece of music. It doesn't need a ton of kind of crashing ornamentation. version of Barney Brannigan's with some simple chords and double stops. Again, the idea with a sweet, gentle tune like this is just to add those bursts of harmonic 
resonance through the tune. The Rocky Road to Dublin, of course, is world famous. It's in Ulysses, recited several times by Mr. DC. Not gonna lie, I haven't read Ulysses. Who has? Wikipedia tells me that it was written in the 1800s by an Irish poet called D.K. Gavin, curiously about his travels to Liverpool from his home in Joom, County Galway, close to where I grew up, the fastest town in Ireland, Joom. It's been recorded by everybody, the Dubliners, the Pogues, Fancy Brothers, The Chieftains, The Rolling Stones. It's a very famous piece of music. I wore my Rocky Grass t-shirt for the Rocky Road to Dublin. Here is the simple tune of the Rocky Road to Dublin. Here's a version of the Rocky Road to Dublin with simple ornamentation. What you will find with that tune is that it's so lovely on its own that it doesn't need a whole load of ornamentation. We can absolutely put it in, and we will, but just so you know. As a slip jig that sounds like a hop jig, it's lovely all on its own. Here's another version of the Rocky Road to Dublin. This time we're just going to use simple double stops or simple chords. At the end of that second part, rather doing the run of fast notes, I think they're eighth notes. Is that what you call them? Quavers, semi-quavers, lost in translation. They're not triplets, although they sound like you're playing triplets, but you're not. 
you can just keep it simple with this version. At the end of this video, I've snuck in a third part, which I learned from the playing of Paul Brock. We did an album called Humdinger way back in 2006, and we put these two tunes together. And they're a lot of fun. Here's the Rocky Road to Dublin and Barney Brannigan's The Other Way Around at 120 BPM, which is a tempo that really suits the Rocky Road. It might be a little bit faster for Barney Brannigan's. And in this one, watch out for a surprise third part in the Rocky Road to Dublin. One, two, three. I do hope you enjoy these lessons. If you do, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you don't miss any. And it does help enormously if you take a moment and drop a little comment in the box below. It helps the YouTube algorithm show these videos to more folks who like the banjo. As always, everything is fully notated, transcribed in tab, stave, ABCs. PDFs are all available and that's on my Patreon. So find the link in the description.